to From the Nest Podcast. And today I have with me a very special guest, our daughter, Carly Reese. So this is her very first podcast, so she might be a little bit nervous, but at the same time, you're excited too, right? Yep. (laughs) So today we're actually going to be sharing what it's like to be a daily vlogger on YouTube. Basically, what it's like to share your lives on video with the whole world. So for those of you guys who don't know, we have a daily vlog channel called Our Family Nest. And we currently have over 1,400 videos on our channel. And we started making random videos. Gosh, what do you even remember what year, Carly? Like 2007, 6? I was thinking maybe 10, 11, somewhere really? in there. Oh, well, yeah, duh. I would have been 4 in 2007. Yeah. Never mind. I want to say it was probably like around 2010. Or 9, I think. We I moved all nice. those videos over to, we started Our Family Nest in 2012, and we had probably about 100, 150 videos before we started daily vlogging in October of 2014. So we are in our fourth year of daily vlogging. Does it feel like four years to you? No. <laughs> well, kind of. So I would definitely be lying if I didn't say that daily vlogging on YouTube has changed our lives, wouldn't you say? Yep. However, can you even really remember a time before we filmed every day? No. (laughs) Well, no. (laughs) I was trying to think like when I was super young, but I don't remember any of that. Yeah, you remember four years ago you were like... Well, we made videos when you were like seven or eight, but we, you were like nine when we started daily vlogging, right? And um, then Carly actually has her own channel, Carly Reese. Um, I actually have some notes here because some of the stuff I forget. She has 180 videos on her channel. Did you know you had that many? No. I (laughs) barely film ever. And she has 390,000 subscribers and 32 million total views. And I should have said Our Family Nest. We have um, over 980,000 subscribers. We're on our way to hit 1 million soon, hopefully. And we have over 350 million views on our family channel. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) So setting all the statistical data aside, let's just talk now more about like just what it's like to film every day, have your life shared on video and that sort of thing. About like what if somebody said, do you like being a daily vlogger? What would you say? Sometimes yes, but sometimes no. And no, because it's very time consuming. And sometimes when I want to be doing like other things, like taking baths and taking naps, <laughs> I have to be filming. And I don't know, sometimes it can get annoying, but other times it's like fun and a good thing because we get a lot of opportunities that probably no one ever gets in their life. Yeah. By the way, we should have shared that you're 13 years old. Some I'm people. 20. <laughs> She'll be 14 in August. She's our youngest of our four kids. Our sons are um, 15, 17, and 22, by the way, for those of you who may not know that. But um, go ahead. She's raising her hand to talk. <laughs> I want to come up with a random question. Am I allowed to do that? Sure. It's about like... What's your most embarrassing moment you've ever had, like, in filming? It doesn't necessarily have to be, like, on our channel. I have one. I would feel like if I had a really bad, embarrassing moment, I probably would just not put it in the video, so. Well, what is one? Like, explain it. You tell me yours, and I'll see if I can think of one. When we were on that one news channel one time, and I started talking about if Pipsqueak if it was like a boy or a girl or not. Yeah. And it was literally on the news and everyone probably saw it. I was like, yeah, I don't know if my hamster's a boy or a girl or not. <laughs> it was so bad. How old? You were probably, what, like 10 maybe yes. when we did that? We got interviewed for like a and she was like, local news. Oh. It was kind of like an afternoon bonus little feature on their news channel. It was pretty cool though, but I was definitely very very nervous I feel like I would still be nervous today but yet I feel like I would be a little bit better at what to say I probably wouldn't even be nervous you don't think Mm -mm. (laughs) so what would you say are the most like positive 
aspects to daily vlogging? I know you said there's good and bad, but what are the things that like stand out to you the most that are positive? So some positive things probably are we get to go on like vacations a lot, even though I hate flying places, but (laughs) we get to go like to the zoo a lot, different water parks, and usually, and if we didn't have YouTube, we probably wouldn't be able to do that stuff as much. And yeah. I think, well, it kind of goes along with what you were saying was the bad part about it is sometimes you just want to be a typical 13-year-old and take baths up in your... Huh? Be free. Yeah, you want to take baths, you want to hang out in your room, you want to go do things with friends, and I might say, no, we have to film this today for our channel, or you have to film a video for your channel, and I think... um, the, the part that I love about that is that's that's kind of my point, is if we didn't have the channel, there's so many things that we wouldn't do together because you would be off at your friend's house more often. And you would be like, when we're not filming a lot of times because we are together so often, the family sometimes is like splits off in different directions and you're hanging out in your room with friends. Blake might be with his girlfriend. You know, Chase is off doing his thing. So I feel like at least we know we have that one aspect almost like daily that we do spend time together that we maybe necessarily wouldn't if we didn't have the channel. Do you know? Mm-hmm. So what about like negative? What would you say? Uh, I always feel like someone's following me, if that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, even when we're not filming, you feel like you're being watched? Yeah, like, in public. I don't know if that makes sense. That's not really a negative thing. That's just more of, like, a... Weird aspect. Yeah. But also, I can't really, like, go places, like, a lot, like, how normal, like, teenagers would. Like, you probably wouldn't let me go to the movies with, like, someone else's mom. Just because you're, like, paranoid like that. Yeah, I feel like I'm already a pretty overprotective mom, especially with our daughter, um, more so even with the boys. But, yeah, it's definitely stepped up a notch even further because of the fact that when we are out in public, people are always coming up to us, like, at the mall or restaurants or different events and things that we're at and saying, are you from our family nest? So, and I think it's so cute that they always ask, are you from our family nest? <laughs> no, we just look just like them, <laughs> but we're really Next not. Next time I'm going to say, what? <laughs> what is that? One of the other things that I was going to mention too, it kind of goes along with the positive aspect of having a YouTube channel is um, getting the, op- like Carly kind of mentioned, having the opportunities of being able to do cool things. Um, like recently we did like a sponsored video with a local water park and we've done like we went we worked with um, Scott 1000 and we did this whole trip in an RV I mean like we would have never probably never say never but we probably would have never done that as a family without you know what I mean being sponsored and um, getting trips and things like that and then I don't know like I said I think sometimes even the simplest thing that you do as a family, maybe it's, you know, going to an amusement park or something like that. Somehow just vlogging it makes it more of like enjoyable of an experience because you're just, I don't know, focused more on like the family part of it rather than, oh, okay, Carly, you go here on this ride and we're going to go here on that ride. Like we all stay together and for the purposes of the vlog, but it actually makes it better for our family too at the same time. Like, on a random day or for, like, a specific thing, do you ever go back and watch your own videos? Um, the only time that I would say that I probably go and check on some of them is because we put the link in our videos of, like, like, say today is March 20th. We put the link for March 20th of 2017, 2016, 2015. So, like, you go back and watch So, I, I have to go get the links for those videos. So, sometimes I'm like, oh, I remember that. And some of the ones like where you guys just look so much younger and your voices sound different, those are fun to watch sometimes. Hmm. Why do you watch them? Well, no, not like, not the way you would think. I go back like on my channel a lot and I look at like clothing hauls I do if I can't figure out what to wear. (laughs) And I like try to find clothes that like I've never worn before. 
but it really never works. I just <laughs> try it for fun. We have sometimes gone to our videos too where we're like, do you remember when we did that? Actually, we were just talking about it the other day. Your dad referred to um, our pond out in the front. He was talking about when he put the blue dye in it last year. Remember, it almost looked like it was like at the Caribbean or something. It was so blue. And he was like, I don't think I put the dye in this early in the year. I think it was like May or June. And it I said, oh. it was April because I went back and checked the videos. It was, so I was like, or no, I'm sorry. It was March. Sorry. It was March. I said, no, it was exactly a year ago. So I thought that was weird that it's like certain things that we forget. We can like go back and look up yeah, that's what I was right in the say. video. It definitely like helps. Like you remember things that you probably would never remember. Yeah, in your life. for sure. So, out of all the videos that we make, what would you say are your favorite? Do you have, like, a favorite video or certain kind of videos that you enjoy making the most? I like mm, vacation vlogs, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know. They're just more... I definitely think I'd rather go on someone's channel and watch vacation vlogs than any other video. Yeah. So, I'm going to say that's probably the most fun to make because mm -hmm. some days like when I'm at home and I have nothing else to do I'd rather take a bath and film that video but when I'm on vacation you just film whatever you're doing and yeah it doesn't matter so basically what you're saying is some days are difficult because we're really not doing anything that exciting but yet we have to kind of still create something to share so you're almost like doing things just because of the video where really you just want to take a bath but instead I'm saying <laughs> I like how we're referring to go that. film clean your room clean your room or play with your cats or do something right yeah and sometimes like I'd rather do things like if I were to go up and clean my room I would want to like FaceTime like Alexis and do it while I'm FaceTiming her like I wouldn't rather have the camera like sitting up and watching me clean my room like that's another negative is Sometimes I'd rather just be, like, independent. Yeah. So what if somebody said to you now that you've been doing YouTube for, we're on our fourth year of vlogging, like, did, if someone said, do you have a time when you don't want to vlog anymore? Like, what if somebody said, do you want to quit tomorrow? Or do you want to quit, you know, what if your parents are still vlogging once you graduate? Like, what is your thought on that? Are you thinking, like, there's an end to this? Or are you you have no idea? I don't really think we're going to quit, like, anytime soon, and I don't really ever think, like, about quitting YouTube, but, like, I know there's some days where I just really don't want to film, but I never really, like, want to quit YouTube, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I definitely think you're going to keep filming, or, like, vlogging for a long time, but probably not till like, I graduate, and I have no idea if I'll have a channel when I'm older or not, because I could own, like, 500 cats. <laughs> What am I going to call my channel? Yeah, I don't know. That that's a good question though. What do you see for the future of your own channel? Cuz right now what what kind of videos would you say that you make? Mm, mixture, I guess. I don't know. My channel's weird. It has like so much stuff on it. Like I have movies. I have skits. Yeah, skits. Yeah. Same thing. Uh makeup videos kind of sort of. Uh and then kind of just like fashion yeah fashion i have a lot of haul videos but then i kind of just have like a ton of randomly mixed in videos like i did would you rather before yeah oh yeah like tags and challenges yeah yeah so what do you see like if somebody like three years from now what do you think your channel would consist of once you're like a... i'm not gonna think of three years from now i'm gonna think of when like i'm if i still filmed when i was like 20 and i was moved okay. out okay so Right now, if I close my eyes, <laughs> here's what I see. Me vlogging in a room. I see an orange cat walking around in the background <laughs> and a few other cats walking around in the background. Well, she has two cats now, guys. She has a gray cat, Dander, and a black and white cat, Ooh, Ivy. Are we going to talk about them? So, you can talk about your cats if that's what you'd like to talk can about. We, we'll just make a whole separate podcast. <laughs> it's going to be a while. <laughs> So five years or when you're twenty years old, let's see, that's seven They'll still years. Be alive. They'll still oh be my alive. God, so I'm you have to take them with me everywhere. You picture yourself having more cats. That's your future. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. I'll maybe adopt a kid. Actually no, I'd rather adopt cats. 
I don't want kids right now. No? Nope. You don't want to get married and have a husband and have kids that route? Mm, no. Do you... Not right now. I mean, what if ten. What if uh, when you do get married and have kids, if you go that route, would you foresee yourself making, Vlogging? making videos? And... It depends, like, on if I can continue my career of being a dentist. Mm-hmm. And if I have, like... If I have, like... A lot of time on my hands, maybe, but, like, if not, I'm not going to, like, get myself super stressed out and have to, like, think about doing YouTube every day, and I'm not going to try to make, like, a commitment when I know I'll probably quit after two weeks. Yeah. See, I think the difficult part is, because I've toyed around with this idea many times, especially because YouTube and vlogging has changed quite a bit over the years, I have toyed around with the idea of not making videos every day, but tell me if you agree with this. I actually think that if we cut down and said, okay, we're not going to vlog every day, that then before you know it, every other day would become every three days. And every three days would become every, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's one of those things that you either just need to be committed. Or just don't do it. Yeah. Because, yeah, I do that all the time, too. That's basically, like, a kid, like, not doing their homework. Like, when you don't do one, like, assignment and you're like, oh, well, I like not having to do homework. Then every day you just stop doing your homework. And then yeah. eventually it becomes... I Nothing. think that's my biggest fear. And it's almost too just just because of the idea of how much that I do enjoy my job. I almost feel like if we weren't making videos for our family nest, I probably would end up just making videos for my channel. So I would probably still be like filming and editing and stuff every day. So, but that is something that we probably need to think about more for the future because I would say if you guys watch our daily vlogs you would see that the majority of the videos definitely always include me and I would say what 80 percent include you 98 98 <laughs> you guys will have to let us know if you think that person what that percentage is if you watch our vlogs you think it's 98 mm-hmm yeah. So a couple more things that I want to mention in this video. You know, why do we make YouTube videos? And I'm going to give my answer of that first and then Carly, you can answer. Um, I think in the beginning when I made YouTube videos, it was more just for the challenge of seeing if, if I could do it. And then it was just fun to be able to film the kids doing like all these cute little funny challenges and stuff. I never would have predicted when we first started that we would have been doing like daily vlogs like we are now where we just sit and kind of share whatever we're doing for the day. Um, just because, I don't know, it is sometimes weird when I think about people who say, what do you film? What do you do that's so interesting every day? And honestly, I really don't know. <laughs> that is what's so crazy. How we manage to come up with 10 minutes or more of footage to share and is it probably always exciting is the day before no definitely not but I think our channel definitely gives a good glimpse into what a typical American family does on a daily basis and we do have an audience like in other countries and people will kind of comment and that's something that they do mention is the fact that you know someone lives in Australia or Ireland or something like that and their daily life is quite a bit different but when it comes to making YouTube videos I would say the filming part is the part that I enjoy probably the least sometimes it's all of the like editing and making of the thumbnail and the different things that come with producing a YouTube channel that I actually enjoy even more so I feel like when I say, when I answer the question why I make videos, it's not just about the filming and the spending time together as the family. It's kind of like the whole part that goes with having a YouTube channel. So what would your answer to that question be? Okay, well, I think like the reason we still like film and we still have like a YouTube channel today is because like when uh, me and Chase and like the whole family or whatever was younger and ever since like we started filming it was kind of just like for fun and back then it was like oh yeah nothing's ever gonna happen we're just doing this for fun but I feel like once like you get like good at something like if it's a sport and you get good at it you're obviously gonna want to keep doing that and once we kind of like grew bigger we weren't just gonna stop and like 
have all of our like subscribers and stuff go to waste. So now I just feel like we're committed to it and now we're just going to keep doing it. That's a really good answer. That's true. So I definitely don't like, not like don't like, but I feel like the, my least favorite part would be the filming too, just because like sometimes it takes very long and it gets frustrating because if you're filming with other people and they like keep messing up, it kind of makes you mad like on your end, yeah. you know? what i'm saying but that's why vlogging is so nice though because kind of vlogging is what it is but if you sit down and you're like doing a brand deal or you're trying to film like a certain challenge and that's the part where you end up like refilming and starting over mm -hmm. and yeah those videos can definitely that's the funny part there have been some videos that we've done that uh have probably caused family arguments <gasps> at the same time as the family spending time together wouldn't you say yeah. where everyone's like come on we don't want to start over <laughs> also like the editing part for me is very long like i can't do it like super fast plus every single time i make videos half the files just randomly disappear and the whole video <laughs> just disappears but um she's still in the learning process for her channel she does all the filming on her own i don't even remember back in the day when i used to like yeah, stand sit there, there and tell me what to say and yeah. you would put cuts in between yeah oh god now she kind of she film does all her filming on her own but i do still majority of her editing just because time wise i have more time to do it than she does because she's busy with dance and friends and taking baths <laughs> but oh and cats so here's another question that I wrote down that I found online is um, how do you find success on YouTube? Like, what do you define as success? Ooh. And I think in the beginning, well, I'll go ahead and let Carly answer first so she doesn't lo lose her thought here because she's raising her hand again. Because for like an hour. <laughs> what was the question again? Oh, <laughs> I don't really think there's any like certain thing that's success and some certain thing that's not. Like, you know? Like, obviously, there's, like, Jake Paul and Erica Costell, who gets, like, millions of, like, subscribers overnight. But just because you have less subscribers than them doesn't make them, like, any better than what you're doing. No. And what's on your channel. Because I think that's that's kind of my whole point is how do you define success? Because what you find as a success for yourself, another person could think of that completely different like when we hit you know like 500,000 subscribers it could be a way bigger deal than to someone who just hit like 10 million or like 100 like yeah it's all different yeah so I think too um, when we first started YouTube we definitely weren't looking for success um, we were doing it just for fun and then even when we started making money it was like okay well let's start making videos every day and let's see how far this can go and let's see if we can make a hundred dollars a month and then let's see if we can make five hundred dollars a month and we started doing it to pay for carly's dance because uh she does competitive dance oh and it got so expensive Money. yeah very expensive and then over time we had steady growth and we grew pretty fast i would say like when we hit the time frame when we hit like a hundred thousand subscribers to even probably like five and six hundred thousand subscribers went super super fast but then i think it's kind of slowed down and tapered off and i feel like the closer we get to a million it slowed down even more and yeah, we know. even had it's comments been like a nine hundred thousand for like a year yeah and we've had com it not literally a year but we have had comments where people's like oh we can't believe you're not at a million yet but personally for myself, like, I think it'll be really cool to be able to have that official, oh, we have 1 million subscribers. Because, like, once you hit 1 million, you can just all the time say you have 1 million yeah, subscribers. Yeah, that's way easier than coming up to, like, someone and be like, yeah, we have 987,364. <laughs> it would be easier to just be like, I have a million. And plus, it seems so much, like, more grand. Yeah. Like, yeah. not But, like, I mean, it's grand for some people to say I have 100,000 subscribers. Well, yeah, like, you know? I'm, I'm not saying, like, that anything, like, below it is bad. Because nothing below that is bad. But right. it just sounds really good on your channel when you have a million subscribers. Yeah. And, um, you know, honestly, a lot of people are always confused. They think you get paid off of subscribers and that oh, sort of thing. And you don't. <laughs> like, there's nothing that... That'd be cool. That's why your definition of success has to come from, like, what's important to you. And to me, it's like, 
I find success from knowing we can create a video, we can post at the same time every day. People will watch it. Yep, people will watch. And that's the other thing, too. You know, sometimes we'll post a video that I feel like is a really good video that we've worked hard on. (laughs) No one watches it. And it's, like, posted, and maybe I didn't have a good title or a bad thumbnail. And then (laughs) you go back and change it. Yeah, we get low views. So then I'll try to change the title or something like that to try to... Uh, boost the views and it's not that I am like upset about money or anything like that it's more just the fact of like I work so hard on this video and I think it's such a great video and for some reason no one's watching it so for me for sure the definition of success comes from oh I posted this video and you know a hundred thousand people watched it that's that's super cool okay so this is like a short answer question what do you think like the most viewed videos are I know what. Well, I they know are. what they are. Um, our Charlie Charlie video. No, like not like that. Like, hmm. Like Type a of series of video, like challenges. It could be, probably our challenges. Mine is like I think any thumbnail with Chase and Asha in it, or Blake and Lily, one or the other. Oh, you think so? Or Dander and Ivy. Those <laughs> hit a million every time. <laughs> She's I'm talking kidding. about her brothers and their girlfriends. And my cat. It used to be like our challenge videos always got a ton of views because that was just the popular thing at the time for YouTube was to, you know, do all these like bean boozled challenges and slime challenges and all that kind of stuff. And we don't do those type of videos as much anymore just because I just haven't really, like if we see something interesting and that looks fun, then we'll go ahead and try it out and film that sort of video. But a lot of this stuff is a little bit um, either immature or inappropriate (laughs) absolutely (laughs) like uh, the jake pauls and different (laughs) kinds of challenges that they're doing that are like okay not appropriate for my 13 year old or whatever vlogs at this point are way more seen and popular than challenges i think well not popular but i think a lot of more people are making vlog channels now yeah not a lot of people are doing challenges anymore so it's kind of like dying down yeah, but vlogging, though, is going through some hard times, too. It's really hard. A lot of people will contact me and ask for advice and stuff on how to start a channel and what well, to do to try to either. to get exposure and to get views. And that might be something that I talk about on my channel or in this podcast um, in the future. I definitely don't want to get into that today because that's a whole other story. But um, it's really hard. I think a lot of luck is involved, and there really is no easy answer. Because, honestly, you could do the exact same thing is another channel and not be as successful or have the views or the subscribers that they do yeah, you like could it's, copy word for word yeah but that's not gonna change there's like, so anything. much more factored in i think like the way you like act like if you're a lot bigger and you're a lot more like smiley it could probably draw like more attention towards yeah, you. yeah if you're actually enjoying yourself yeah Unlike me, where I just talk. That's what you tell me. Sometimes I'm like, could you smile while you're talking? You look I don't like... know how. Yeah. I'm... I guess it's just sort of like, how I don't know. I know when the it? camera's on, you just, I have you know fun. You really off topic? So... I always say habby, like habit and hobby, like together. <laughs> I've told people that today, but I have a ton of habbies. So you guys will have to let us know if you enjoyed this podcast with Carly, if you would like us to do some more podcasts in the future with the oh, kids. And would you like us to do one featuring Dander and Ivy's meowing? <laughs> we need to talk about them in a podcast. You think? Yes. How to take care of cats? No, Is not that. that. A- we just have to talk about them. So stay tuned, you guys, for part two on this topic. Um, next week, Chase and Ken are going to kind of do a similar video and I have give their a side of the story. Good podcast you could do. What's that? Uh, you and Andrew talking about divorce. I know you've done like one of those talks about it, but we probably have different viewers now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. See, sounds good. I have logic. We'll add that to our list. So, guys, thanks for joining us today. As always, you can find us on YouTube if you'd like to watch our daily vlogs on youtube.com slash ourfamilynest. 
or you can listen to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes if you're watching the video on Candyland. If you'd like to listen to us while you commute, check us out there. And also be sure if you do listen on iTunes to rate and review our podcast because that helps a lot. I guess it helps for them to share your podcast once people rate it and uh, get it out there. So thanks guys for listening today and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.